just as a quick background, human embryonic stem cells are very amazing cells that can make all cells in the human body. So that's anything you can think of, like brain or skin or muscle. Um, this seems not very interesting until you begin to consider how if we can use stem cells to treat or cure human disease and human suffering. And so if you think about it, lots of human diseases like diabetes or Parkinson's disease or even aging are because a certain kind of cell in the human body is lost. So for example, in diabetes, your pancreatic cells are lost and you can't make any more insulin. Or in spinal cord injury, you lose your spinal cord cells and you can't move anymore. And this is very devastating. So if human embryonic stem cells can make all cells in the human body, then theoretically, if you have spinal cord injury, we could take human embryonic stem cells, make a near infinite number of spinal cord cells, and surgically put them back into your spinal cord and restore function of that and try to bring function back to your muscles. And conceptually, we can extend this to any range of disease. And, um, and I think that many people really look to stem cells as kind of a second generation of medicine that right now we just give you drugs or pills or shots that basically are chemicals that try to um, restore some kind of biological function. But with stem cells, what we're talking about is that if you're missing cells, that we can just put them right back into you. And that um, this kind of treatment called regenerative medicine, we think is very, very cool. Realistically, that um, this might even be in the decades range. And so I think while that this is somewhat disappointing, um, many um, animal experiments with diseases like diabetes and Parkinson's disease have already shown that stem cells have remarkable ability to um, help treat or even fully cure many kinds of diseases. And recently, the FDA approved the hu first human embryonic stem cell-based clinical trial, and this was for spinal cord injury. I think that while it, this has made it sound, human embryonic stem cells sound very remarkable, as you probably know, there's a lot of ethical and moral considerations about human embryonic stem cells. And I think the fact that they are so clinically powerful, but that, they are some, that there's a lot of considerations involved makes this very complicated. And this is because, as the word human embryonic stem cell implies, that these cells are taken from a human embryo. And so I think very unfortunately, oftentimes when we take these human embryonic stem cells from the embryo, it leads to the collapse of the human embryo. And so it can no longer develop. What I'm working on is an alternative around this. So obviously there's a very big promise with human embryonic stem cells, how they can help cure disease. And that I think that it would be really awesome if we could find a new way to get them without having to destroy a human embryo. And so recently, there's a new technology called reprogramming that's come up. I told you before that embryonic stem cells can make all cells of the body. And so what we're thinking with reprogramming is of what if we can turn any cell into an embryonic stem cell. The significance of this is that if we can take any old cell lying around and we can make it into an embryonic stem cell, then we can basically make infinite amounts of human em embryonic stem cells without ever touching a human embryo or harming a human life. And I think that this is a big step to unlocking the widespread usage and ethical usage of human embryonic stem cells. And that I know that at least some politicians and religious officials agree that this is a very big step. At Harvard, we're very interested in how it works. And so that's part of what I do that comes in. There are these three genetic switches that if we turn on, we believe we can make um, many kinds of cells into human embryonic stem cells or human embryonic-like cells. And that this kind of programming, if we want to bring it to the clinic, we have to think how this is going to work, how we can take cells from patients and turn them into stem cells. And so um, there are several ways to do this. And very unfortunately, the biggest way right now is to use viruses. And that doesn't really make sense, because if we're, we're using viruses to make stem cells and we eventually want to be able to use these stem cells to cure patients, there's um, a logical catch right there. And so um, there's several other techniques, but what our group is trying to investigate is whether or not we can use chemicals 
to turn cells into stem cells. And so basically at Harvard, our group, what we do is that we basically have lots of cells and we test thousands of chemicals on them. This is called a chemical library. And we see if any of these chemicals can turn these cells into human embryonic stem cells. And I think that um, one day the goal would be really that if we could just take a cocktail of chemicals, dump it onto any cell, and turn it into an embryonic stem cell that can drive clinical therapies and can drive research. Mm -hmm.